Here's a question for you. What type of chemist kills you, doesn't cure you? Here's a clue. It moves around on a giant sticky foot. It employs chemical warfare. It eats things as big as itself. It paralyzes its prey in seconds. It has eyes on stalks. It carries its home on its back. And it launches attacks with harpoons. Meet the cone snail, the world's most venomous snail, found right throughout the coral reef regions of the world. And let's be honest, they're a slow moving snail and they don't look like they're all that venomous, but looks can be deceiving. There's a saying that we use around here, if it's a cone, leave it alone. And that's something you should really listen to. So what's so dangerous about these slow moving snails? They've got an oral siphon which they use for sniffing out their prey and they by and large have two different ways of feeding. One group actually has this big oral hood. So they find a sleeping fish, envelop it in this hood, and then basically use this harpoon-like tooth, jab the fish and inject it with venom and immobilize it within seconds. The second group also feeds on sleeping fish, but these guys have a proboscis that comes out of the mouth, out through the sand, nails the fish again with this harpoon-like tooth, injects it with venom, causes paralysis within one or two seconds, and then they haul in like a fishing line down their throat into their stomach and eat the whole thing in one complete mouthful. So not only do cone snails feed in different ways, but they can produce different types of venom. So think of them as mobile chemical factories. They can produce a venom for catching their prey, like fish, or they can produce a venom for defense against predators. And those venoms are completely different. What's really cool about it is they do it in a really unique way. Think of it as a venom gland with a really long venom duct or a hose connected to this harpoon-like tooth. The venom gland is a bag of Lego. What happens is they take pieces of that Lego and they construct different types of venom down along that duct and squirt it out the other end. So if they want a venom to kill a fish, they construct it down that duct. If they want a venom to protect themselves against a predator like us, they produce a different venom. All this from a slow moving snail. So why study cone snails? Well, scientists have already found one component from the venom of these guys that's more potent than morphine. Now, when you know that cone snails have over 500 different components to their venom, and there are 500 different species, that means there are 250,000 different components. Any of those components could be useful to humans. The potential is huge. That's the nature of science.